लेकिन ये तो और नहीं किया अभी नहीं हो रहा हेलो कैन यू हियर मी हाँ ठीक ठीक या ओके ऑल ऑफ यू गुड आफ्टरनून ऑनलाइन ऑफलाइन यस आई टेक अप सम ऑफ योर डाउट्स आल्सो आई विल डू दैट We'll revise some topic first. Uh, why is this, Ganesh? Uh, can the others confirm? Ganesh is telling it's blurred. Uh, is it same for others also? आपको अगर blur है तो वो उसको hangover बोलते हैं. No? It's fine. So Ganesh, it's your hangover then. Take some coffee, okay. Or maybe clean the screen. Okay, fine. All right. Okay. Hello, Jason. Good afternoon. <laughs> okay. Which one is good, tea or coffee? Coffee works. Okay, all of us agree is coffee works better. <laughs> Shraddha, you have no idea what we're talking about. That's why we're saying milk. Agar pata nahi hum kis baare mein baat kar rahe hain. Acha, theek hai. Okay, okay, fine. अच्छा लेट स्टार्ट ऑफ नाउ अ रिमाइंडर टू द ओल्डर स्टूडेंट्स ऑल ऑफ यू यू आर सपोज सबमिट योर सिनॉप्सिस ऑफ जियोमोर्फोलॉजी ऑन सैटरडे या एंड न्यू स्टूडेंट्स नो असाइनमेंट्स फॉर यू राइट नाउ फर्स्ट वन वीक वी कीप इट एज हनीमून पीरियड सो एंजॉय द लाइफ फाइल यू कैन ठीक है एंड देन वील गेट बैक टू यू Uh, Gaurav, what was that? No, Amundsen Point is the geographical South Pole, and the magnetic one is the McMurdo Sound. Gaurav, Amundsen Point is the geographical South Pole. The Amundsen point is not same as McMurdo Sound. McMurdo Sound has the magnetic South Pole or the North Pole, whatever you say. Uh, Wegener did not tell us anything about the magnetic ones. Wegener's idea was not based on paleomagnetism. Wegener's idea was based on studying the glacial deposits, the glacial till. ओके देन रेक्टिफाई दैट देर कुड है मिस्टेक रेक्टिफाई कर लो आप क्या लेनी है टेक्स्ट बुक आप कल एबसेंट थे यस यू हैव बाय समर सिंह क्लाइमेटोलॉजी इज द हाइट ऑफ एटमोस्फेयर रिलेटेड टू ग्रेविटी जेशन ग्रेविटी इज द Is definitely there. Who's saying no? Gravity is taken for granted. वो तो पक्का है. But the height depends on the gases, the convection, and the rest. Yes, that's why Earth does not have much of hydrogen and helium. They are very lighter. They would have escaped. So yes, gravity plays a role, but that's trivial.
if you have saturation, the sediments will start flowing, Gaurav, what we call as mud flows or soil creep. When sediments have moisture, they become more mobile and they start flowing. That's how we have the landslides. Okay. Fine. Uh, the older topics, the so new st students again, I, re I repeat, you try doing your own synopsis. In one or day, two days time, I'll sit down with you after the class and explain what should be done. But you keep on the efforts. Okay. Now, after you have struggled and then I tell you the solution, I find students respect me more then. Okay. So, if I tell you from day one, you don't appreciate what we are telling you. So, abhi thua sa haath pair lo apna. Then we'll talk about it. So let's get back to uh, climatology. Okay. In climatology, we discussed what is atmosphere, what is the uh, significance of atmosphere, what is the origin of atmosphere, what is the uh, composition and what is the structure. So, most of these are uh, quick discussions. I do not expect any questions on these topics. But then nice to know if you understand the process called degassing, you understand the process of volcanism, what gases are coming out and how uh, oxygen was formed much later. Oxygen was not in the initial atmosphere. It was because of the biological processes. So when uh, plants uh, produce oxygen by photosynthesis, that's how the oxygen ultimately becomes part of the atmosphere. You understand that part here? Composition, there are some major gases and the permanent gases. There are certain temporary gases and there are certain micro, sorry, there are certain uh, minor gases. There are certain minor gases. These major gases and the permanent ones. We've talked about nitrogen, oxygen and uh, argon. They make up 99.93% of the atmosphere in terms of volume of dry air. We have carbon dioxide which is 0.03% and we have a whole range of ozone, dust particles, we have uh, helium, hydrogen. These are not the more important in terms of composition, but they are very, very important in terms of okay, the climatic process. So when I say climatic process, I am talking about the winds moving, the air rising, condensation, precipitation. We are talking about uh, uh, the processes where uh, the atmosphere tries to even off the heat. So, one statement we made was that the major gases, the major gases uh, uh, do not uh, play a significant uh, role in uh, climate and in the weather. Okay. The major gases are not the greenhouse gases, the nitrogen, the oxygen and argon. These are not the very important greenhouse gas. Yes, uh, uh, Gaurav, uh, Yes, uh, A and B ultraviolet does reach the surface, but then you see I am avoiding some detailings because they are not important for our optional. So if you are part of the GS, you know a bit more things though there, but for optional, we will skip all of those facts. And ye bhi right hai, that is not that nitrogen, oxygen do not absorb anything, asa nahi hai. Oxygen does absorb some amount of ultraviolet. Even uh, nitrogen can absorb some very small amount of ultraviolet and also 
some amount of infrared. But these are not significant ones. Okay. That's why in general we say nitrogen and oxygen are not greenhouse substances. You just ignore that. So the main greenhouse substances are carbon dioxide, water vapor, ozone is very important, uh, dust particles are important, methane is important, pollutants are important. So whatever climate process we say, whatever climatic okay, dynamism we say, in terms of winds, in terms of, I said, uh, rising and uh, sinking air, where they talk about rainfall, you talk about clouds, you talk about cyclones, all of these are a consequence of these gases. So, the atmospheric dynamism is actually a consequence of the atmosphere trying to even off the temperature and the heat variations. Some, plates are, some places are hot, the air can rise. Some places are cool, the air sinks and the circulation starts. So, when the winds move, okay, they move because they want to distribute the heat energy. So, our point here is that all, all climate, uh, all uh, weather is actually Okay, the consequence of all climate, all weather are the consequence of the atmosphere uh, trying to uh, redistribute uh, heat energy. Okay, so whatever winds we have, whatever air motions we have, the atmosphere trying to balance off the unevenness. That's why the major gases do not have much role to play in the climatic events. Okay. Next, we move on to the atmospheric structure. How is the atmosphere arranged? So, how arranged? One is in terms of the degree of mixing. The lower layers within 80 kilometers are a bit better mixed. We call this as the homosphere. The above layers above 80 are less mixed. There is an element of molecular and ionic segregation. Okay, so this is called as the heterosphere. Though I am saying homosphere, but understand the atmosphere is not entirely homogeneous here. Yahan par bhi, the water vapor is in the lower layers. Yahan par bhi, the dust particles are in lower layers. In this itself, the ozone layer makes up a layer only in the stratosphere. Okay, so when I am saying homosphere, uh, please understand it is not entirely homogeneous. But if you talk in terms of the major gases, nitrogen, oxygen, argon, the proportion is almost same there. Okay? So the homosphere in comparison to this one is relatively better mixed. But then we can have variations here also. Primarily variations in terms of dust, the variations in terms of water vapor, and the variations in terms of ozone. Now, because of climate change, even carbon dioxide is becoming more in the lower parts of the atmosphere. Okay, so you understand homosphere and heterosphere. The second type of layering is on the basis of air density. The lower layers, the molecules are more closely packed. The lower layers, you have got more amount of gases because air is not uniformly spread. Okay, air can be compressed, air has weight. Okay, so the lower air tends to become okay, more compressed. As you go upwards, the compression is less. And we gave you a graphical representation that if this is the weight of one atmosphere at the sea level, it dramatically falls okay, with height. The pressure here is 
1013 millibars that's equal to 1 atmosphere that's equal to 76 centimeters of mercury column you rise up by approximately 5.6 kilometers uh, 50 percent of atmosphere is left by the time you're hitting 28 kilometers 30 kilometers hardly much left so even if i say the atmosphere goes on up to 600 kilometers or 800 kilometers there is not much of atmosphere left in the higher heights the higher heights has very few molecules and ions that's why we have some layering in terms of density uh, absolutely yes this is what is the pattern this is nothing but the pattern of okay a, a vertical uh, pressure variations so pressure here is one atmosphere pressure here is half atmosphere pressure as 16 kilometers is approximately only okay 10 atmospheres okay if this sorry uh, 0.1 atmosphere only 10 percent left by the time i hit 28 30 kilometers 99 percent is gone so yes this is nothing but the pattern of pressure with height there is pressure variations as i go up sea level has more pressure mountains that's why our nose bleeds right our body has a blood pressure the blood pressure is countered by the atmospheric pressure my head is having the weight of entire atmosphere i don't feel the weight because of the blood pressure okay but if i go up the pressure above is less the blood pressure is more so my vessels will burst i can have nose bleeding because of that my skin can start cracking up extreme okay less amount of pressure may. okay so yes as i rise up this is nothing but the patterns of the pressure with altitude okay i think that's okay all of you yeah fine and the third one is what we were discussing the pattern of the atmosphere in terms of temperature trends how does the temperature change with height so here we said that if you look at how the atmosphere gets heated the atmosphere does not get heated largely by the direct insulation of course sun is the ultimate source whatever energy we have sun se hai. but when energy comes in it is not heating much energy comes in it gets absorbed by that by the surface and then the energy is released out the energy comes in absorbed by atmosphere some part and then from here the energy again will get released out so this is the more amount bulk of the energy comes in gets absorbed and then it is lost that's why atmosphere largely is heated from below okay it is the lower layers are warmer as they rise up it becomes cooler but then there are layers where it can also be heated from above if have ozone it will absorb and this ozone will heat on this side okay and also heat in the upward side so it's something like this is the surface of the earth okay the energy comes in absorbed so highest temperature yahan par hai you rise up the temperature starts to fall energy comes in some energy comes in and gets absorbed here so yahan par okay this is the warmest layer this is the warmer layer as you go up the temperature falls as you come down the temperature falls okay this is the warmest layer you rise up the temperature falls so i have one line like this and we have another line like this that's how we have the mesosphere some of you asked me sir why is the mesosphere heated from below because mesosphere apne aap mein hi thodi ho raha hai mesosphere is heated by the stratosphere itself this is very very warm a bit less warm a bit less warm a bit less warm that's why the temperatures 
in the mesosphere is falling. The mesosphere, the temperature falls. Like in the stratosphere, falls uh, uh, with a height. In the stratosphere, the temperature increases with height. In the troposphere, again the temperature will fall with height. So, how do we know the different layers? The layer in which the temperature keeps falling with height, that is troposphere. The layer where the temperature keeps rising with height, stratosphere. Again, the next layer where it starts falling is mesosphere. And the uppermost layer, okay, we have again increased because I have ions here, the ions can absorb insulation. So, thermosphere also is showing increase of temperature. So, and this goes on up to the higher heights. This is the pattern of temperature based atmospheric layering. Okay. And we wrote down something about okay, the, the lower layer. Does ozone responsible for? Yes, Shivam, correct. Ozone absorbs, that's why it starts warming up the air. Essentially, if I have a surface and the energy is coming, it is getting reflected. The energy will not heat the surface. If the energy comes in and energy passes through this, again it will not heat the surface. It will heat only when the energy comes in, the energy gets absorbed. So, by reflection, no heating. If it passes through, again no heating. Only when something gets absorbed, the surface absorbs energy. This becomes warm. This part, ozone, absorbs energy. So, it becomes warm. The ions absorb energy. So, they can become warm. There will be no warming if the energy is passing through the system or if the energy is getting reflected. What was that? If atmosphere is not directly heated, then why the regions that get constant sunlight don't become as hot? I don't know what you are asking me. Atmosphere, when I say not heated by sunlight, okay, I am saying the troposphere. The troposphere is allowing energy to pass, hit the surface and then the energy comes out. Dishan, if you can maybe rephrase your question, I can answer better. In thermosphere, the rate of temperature increase is low, but troposphere heating rate is higher. Uh, no, I will not say that, Suraj. The rate of heating cooling is different. Okay, the absolute temperature is different. Okay, so it's not as simple as that. Okay, I will not uh, say it like that. But of course. The lower layer does have convection, correct. Okay, anybody else offline? Any questions on this till now? Achha, you all understand the idea called normal lapse rate now? Okay. For some of you, you were very disappointed if this was hypothetical. Okay. Life saram ne padha tha, the atmosphere cools or aap aaye bata diye sab, okay, imaginary hai. So, life may as a hota disappointment, okay? Work hard, otherwise the results also will tell you something else. Okay. So, NLR is hypothetical. The actual rate of cooling is called as the environmental lapse rate. Hypothetical hai. So, we had a number for this 6.4 bolo, 6.5 whatever. ELR is a variable. It does not have any fixed value. It varies. It varies with uh, day and night cycles. It varies with seasons. 
इट वेरीज इन टर्म्स ऑफ टाइप ऑफ सर्फेस शिवम आप थोड़ा सा आगे चल रहे हो ओके आई एम सपोज टू बी द टीचर आई डिसाइड ओके एनी डिफरेंट डिजाइन लेट मी नो आई सी इफ यू कैन ज्वाइन हियर कीप विथ माई पेस ओके आगे का नहीं पूछना है अभी आई एम नॉट टॉट दो टॉपिक्स होल्ड ऑन आई टेल यू नो वेन एन एल आर इज डिफरेंट ऑन द पोर्स एंड द इक्वेटर नो परवेज एन एल आर इज कॉन्स्टेंट सिक्स पॉइंट फोर सेंटीग्रेड पर किलोमीटर पोल में भी इतना ही है एंड इक्वेटर में भी इतना ही है एंड दिस इज हाइपोथेटिकल फॉर द एटमोस्फेयर एट अ बैलेंस वेरिएशन आर फॉर ई एल आर जयशान अगर ये क्वेश्चन पूछा आपने इसका पक्का आपके पास आंसर है okay. हाँ मुझे छेड़ रहा है है ना जयशान दिस क्वेश्चन यू कांट आस्क इफ यू डू नॉट नो द आंसर ठीक है सो आई थिंक आई विन ट्राई अगेन ओके आई एल कम बैक इफ नहीं पता है तो कोई बात नहीं मैं बता दूंगा अभी नहीं बताऊंगा आज मैंने प्रिपेयर नहीं किया कल के लिए कर रखा है मैंने व्हाट्स द क्वेश्चन शिवम अगेन बियॉन्ड तो नाउ द क्लास नोज यू शिवम ओके एसोसिएट टीचर ओके और सीनियर टीचर में भी ओके आई थिंक यू ऑल गॉट एन एल आर एंड ई एल आर नाउ कपल ऑफ मिसलेनियस पॉइंट्स टू गिव हेडिंग मिसलेनियस फैक्ट्स अबाउट the atmospheric layers miscellaneous facts about the atmospheric layers so one i said the troposphere is the weather layer the troposphere is the weather layer number 2 the stratosphere has ozone and the maximum ozone is at around i said 25 30 kilometers height but ozone layer jo hai this is from about uh, 15 kilometers to uh, 50 uh, 60 kilometers ओजोन ये पूरे लेयर में है बट द मैक्सिमम ओजोन इज एट अराउंड 25, 30 किलोमीटर्स अब द सरफेस एंड द ओजोन ओजोन इज कंटिन्यूसली प्रोड्यूस्ड एंड ओके इट इज कंटिन्यूसली डिस्ट्रॉयड एक साइकिल चल रहा है ozone is created ozone is destroyed ozone is created ozone is destroyed okay so uh, this is a cycle which is called as the chapman cycle c h a p m a n chapman cycle is part of a chemical reaction where ozone is created and ozone gets converted into oxygen so ozone uh, creates oxygen it again become ozone it again becomes oxygen it goes on we call that as the chapman cycle okay the third fact the third fact a stratosphere stratosphere does not have mixing of atmosphere stratosphere does not have mixing of the atmosphere the mixing nahi hota that's why when i say strata means what it is it is uh, it has uh, distinct layers so in the troposphere it's all mixed in the stratosphere ye aise layers ban jate hain the stratosphere does not have mixing okay because because it warms with height because it warms with height warms with height ka matlab kya hai the lower air is cold and the upper air is warm and this cold will not rise 
when the lower air is warm then the air will start rising but in stratosphere reverse hota hai the upper air is warm the lower air is cold so the graph aise hai temperature ka the cold air will not rise if no rising there is no mixing that's why it's called as the stratosphere next the stratosphere can have some clouds the stratosphere can have a some clouds okay ye jo clouds hain they are very high or uh, altitude clouds they are uh, cirrus clouds so one type of clouds called as cirrus clouds and they are very bright they are also called as mother of pearl clouds the stratosphere can have some clouds not too much of them okay they are cirrus clouds c i r r u s cirrus clouds and they are also called as mother of okay pearl clouds they are very bright but these clouds don't cause rain okay rain wale clouds are only in the troposphere the rain clouds are only in the troposphere is one fact another fact is the mesosphere the mesosphere also can have some moisture the mesosphere can also have some moisture but that's because of chemical reactions that's because of chemical reactions or some moisture okay from outer space moisture from outer space you know about comets comets can have ice okay so there is some droplets that could be present that can be captured by earth's atmosphere but that's very very less that is very very less not much theek hai and those moisture the mesosphere mein the mesosphere moisture it can create clouds which are called as nacreous clouds nacreous means dead the clouds of the mesosphere called as uh, called as nacreous clouds because they are dead clouds in fact even these are called as nacreous clouds dead as in they don't cause rainfall nacreous clouds and uh, these clouds they shine in the night therefore they also called as uh, nocti uh, lucent clouds they shine in the night they are called as nocti lucent clouds ye cirrus clouds inko bhi bolte hain nacreous clouds nacreous means they are dead they will not cause rains they will not cause rains okay so one fact about mesosphere now another fact is the uh, thermosphere the thermosphere okay is almost synonymous with the ionosphere pura thermosphere is largely the ions it is synonymous with the with the ionosphere and thermosphere can have very high temperatures the thermosphere can have very high temperatures because it is absorbing the insulation directly the thermosphere can have very high temperatures because the ionosphere can absorb insulation but okay but the thermosphere has a negligible heat the thermosphere has negligible almost okay hardly noticeable thermosphere has negligible heat the reason is that temperature is temperature is uh, the measure of hotness how hot something is and when i say heat it is energy ye do alag cheez hai 
द हीट एनर्जी इज इक्वल टू मास इंटू स्पेसिफिक हीट इंटू टेम्परेचर मास एम सी थीटा इज हीट सो थर्मोस्फेयर में मास नहीं है देन द हीट विल ऑलमोस्ट बी जीरो वाइल इट माइट हैव हाई टेम्परेचर्स थर्मोस्फेयर कैन हैव हाई टेम्परेचर्स बिकॉज वेरी रेरीफाइड मॉलिक्यूल्स बहुत कम है द अमाउंट ऑफ मास is zero almost zero therefore the thermosphere has almost negligible heat c is specific heat c is the specific heat the amount of uh, heat i require to raise the temperature by 1 degree centigrade the specific heat is a property of the body uh, water has a different specific heat land has different specific heat okay uh, 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 pravash by hard disk okay uh, class 10 mein na hua to ab na hone wala okay you just remember this that's all no life may some things come back to you okay so you remember thermosphere has high temperature but thermosphere does not have lot of heat is like you know water If you look at water, water you are heating. If you put a thermometer, the water will not feel so hot. But water can have very high amount of heat. Water requires more amount of heat, okay, to increase the temperature. That's why even point five change of temperature means the water has acquired lot of heat. okay so yeah like it the properties the heat in a body depends on mass the heat in a body depends on specific heat and it depends on a uh, temperature difference so you remember this that's all pravash the formula is uh, heat is m c theta so i'm giving an example where i'm saying temperature may be very high because mass is very less मल्टीप्लीकेशन में हीट बिकम्स वेरी लेस ओके थर्मोस्फियर हैज वेरी लेस अमाउंट ऑफ हीट नेक्स्ट द थर्मोस्फियर द थर्मोस्फियर के जो आयंस हैं द आयंस हैव लेयर्स द थर्मोस्फियर आयंस हैव लेयर्स सो देर इज अ डी लेयर देर इज ई लेयर वन there is e layer 2 there is f layer there is g layer the different names we have of the anosphere d layer e1 layer e2 layer if yeah, some books they write down as uh, e dash layer e double dash layer the f layer and so on so thermosphere has names okay in terms of the ions okay now this d layer is is uh, only present uh, in the daytime the d layer requires sunlight agar sunlight nahi hai the d layer will not be present in the night time it will disappear that's why it's called as sporadic sometimes hota hai it's called as d layer or your books can mention this as the sporadic d layer this word sporadic means sometimes not or not always okay and this d layer uh, uh disappears in the night now these are the other layers now ionosphere ionosphere uh, is uh, capable of is capable of uh, reflecting radio waves the ionosphere is uh, capable of reflecting radio waves ठीक है, so these layers have different properties. The D layer, this can reflect back. It can reflect back back higher radio wave wavelengths. The higher wavelengths, it can reflect back. 
but only day time may net night time it can't operate the e1 and e2 layers this can reflect back medium waves one range of the radio waves called as medium waves they can be reflected by e1 layer and uh, some other wave can be reflected by the f layer this can reflect the short waves okay the d can reflect back a higher radio waves wavelength the e1 layer can reflect back medium waves and the f layer can reflect back short waves when i'm saying short wave or long wave wo bhi apne aap pe range hai the different types of medium waves 1 2 3 4 5 5 the different types of short wave 1 2 3 4 5 5 okay this even layer is called as the kennelly heavy side layer the even layer or the e dash layer is called as the kennelly heavy side layer and the f layer is called as the appleton layer the f layer the e one layer this called as the appleton layer the thermosphere has different layers of ions we name them in terms of d e1 e2 f g and so on they all have the properties of reflecting radio waves the fact jaan lo that the d is a okay temporary layer in the daytime can reflect back a high radio wavelengths the e1 can reflect back medium waves called as kennelly heavy side layer k e n n e l e y kennelly heavy side layer heavy at the niche that's it and this is called as the appleton layer a p p l e t o n appleton layer theek okay? hai some facts about the atmosphere ha huh, sorry uh, ye bhi karega medium waves kis koi aur range mein karega both e1 e2 are responsible for medium waves but medium waves ka alag alag range hote hain okay uh, now you do not have all that okay you know devices uh, back when the radios were having those uh, tuners you tune them as medium wave 1 medium wave 2 medium wave 3 Okay, now it's all automatic. So even the medium waves have have a range. Just remember that much. That's all. Uh, yes, the thermosphere can be called as ionosphere if you talk in terms of ions. Okay, thermosphere essentially understand the atmosphere's layers. Hai. The name of the layer depends on what are you focusing at. Okay, like say. say the person the person called a i can call him a man if i'm looking at gender issues i can call him an animal if i'm looking at the type of life forms i can call him an indian if i'm looking at nationalities so the same person can get classified different ways this is called as the troposphere if i talk in terms of air is mixing this is called a stratosphere because the air is not mixing all layers mesosphere because ye beech mein hai transition and thermosphere because it is having high temperatures okay the same thermosphere i can call as ionosphere if i focus on the ions the stratosphere can be called as ozonosphere if i focus on the ozones so hai to wahi layer but what i want to call it depends on what property am i focusing at so thermosphere layer is also ultimately the ionosphere all the ions are more present up to 600 kilometers iske baad mein even ions become very very less but for now it's okay you can call thermosphere as the ionosphere okay the next miscellaneous fact is I think you're numbering what number six now or five? 
8 okay so next 9 okay so 8 7 we have done so we are at 8 fine the next one is the different temperature layers the different temperature layers have different temperature layers have transition layers between them the different temperature layers of atmosphere have transition layers between them so if this is the troposphere there is a transition layer and then we have stratosphere there is a transition layer and then we have mesosphere again we have a transition layer then we have the thermosphere the troposphere the stratosphere the mesosphere and the thermosphere now this transition layer is called as tropopause this is called as the stratopause this is called as the meso pause so when i say pause means what something has stopped okay so what has stopped yeah what has stopped layer has stopped yeah but layer stop hone ke liye kya aur chahiye some trend has stopped no don't say temperature has stopped the temperature in this what it is cooling the cooling has stopped so if cooling stopped means what the temperature becomes same the temperature is same this is becoming warm the warming stops so again same temperature cooling again same temperatures so vertical line means there is no change of temperature a simple graph okay this is temperature and this is height okay you rise up it falls you rise up again falls you rise up it falls you rise up jo temperature yahan par hai wo yahan par hai again rise up same temperature again rise up same temperature it becomes a vertical line and then you rise up it becomes warm you rise up it becomes warm you rise up it becomes warm again you rise further it again remains same again remains same so these are the transition layers so a transition layer may the lapse rate becomes what in the transition layers what will be the value of the lapse rate zero lapse rate means the change of temperature with height so agar same temperature rahega the lapse rate is zero don't say temperature is zero the lapse rate becomes zero okay because the lapse rate becomes zero so what do we call these layers also as lapse rate zero ka matlab kya hai temperature remains same so what do we call these layers also as we call them as isothermal layers isothermal layer isothermal layers theek hai so the tropopause stratopause and mesopause mesopause all the three are lapse rate zero lapse rate zero lapse rate zero in the tropopause there is no warming sorry there is no cooling there is no cooling in the stratosphere there is no warming in the mesopause there is no uh, cooling anymore that's why we call these layers as isothermal layers this is also another isothermal layer also another isothermal layer the transition layers between the temperature layers are isothermal layers now i will explain right now but just know this one term the isothermal layers the isothermal layers are one type of temperature inversion the isothermal layers are one type of 
temperature inversion conditions. The one type of temperature inversion conditions. So, what do I mean by inversion? Inversion means that something, something was cooling and now it starts okay, increasing. Invert ho gaya na? It has changed. Something was warming, it starts to cool. Again, it's inversion here. Something is okay, cooling, it starts to warm. Again, inversion here. So, inversion means something has changed. What has changed is the lapse rate becomes opposite. It was, it was positive lapse rate, it is now negative lapse rate. Again, positive lapse rate. And this change happens where? At the isothermal layers. Okay, just know this much for now. The isothermal layers are one type of temperature inversion. Put a star mark. The tropopause, the tropopause as an isothermal, the tropopause as an isothermal temperature inversion layer. The tropopause as an isothermal temperature inversion layer is responsible for, is responsible for trapping, is responsible for trapping, trapping all weather processes inside the troposphere. The inversion layer is responsible for trapping all weather processes inside the troposphere. So, see the inversion layers like a lid, it is a cover, okay. If inversion hoga, the wind can't go beyond this, the water vapor can't go beyond this, okay. The clouds can't go beyond this, it is like a lid. So, the inversion layer will trap everything inside and the phasa dega, okay. So, inversion layer traps the weather phenomena inside the troposphere, it does not allow it to go beyond. Which is the coolest? The mesopause is the coolest. The mesopause is the coolest layer of the atmosphere. Temperatures approximately minus 90 degrees centigrade. The mesopause is the coolest layer. It has temperature of approximately minus 90 degrees centigrade. Whereas tropopause, whereas tropopause, can have temperatures in the range of, the tropopause can have temperature in the range of, okay, minus 60 to minus 70, minus 60 to minus 70 degree centigrade. The mesopause is the coolest, minus 90. Okay. So that's about the layers of the atmosphere. Uh, let's move on towards the next topic. Okay, the heat budget of atmosphere. Next is the heat budget of that I said atmosphere, but keep it as Earth atmosphere system. Positive, positive means, okay, I mean it is continuously falling. Negative means it is continuously increasing. So, what is the temperature, okay, if the above layer, temperature of the lower layer, is the difference, is a lapse rate. Okay, when I say NLR is equal to 6.4 centigrade per kilometer means the temperature is fall is falling and I am saying is positive. Positive means temperature of the lower layer is more than the temperature of the above layer. So, lapse rate is, is the temperature of the lower layer minus the temperature of the above layer. So, it is positive. So, lapse positive means it is falling with height. 
lapse rate negative means it is increasing with height. Uh, no, beyond the uh, thermosphere, uh, it now becomes outer space. So, we do not talk about thermopause anymore. It becomes out beyond 600 kilometers is considered as exosphere. So, we do not talk about the thermopause anymore. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Jaga. Yes. Yes, correct. Every kilometer it will be less. Correct. Okay. Let us move on. The next topic I said is the heat budget. Now, now, what is, what is a budget? Budget is a statement, statement of what comes in, what goes out. So, we have economy budget, we can have domestic finance budget, we can have a budget of a company. So, anything that tells us a comparison between something coming inside, something going outside. The budget can be for energy, the budget can be finances. The budget can also be in terms of trade, okay. I have got a positive budget, means, okay, maybe I am importing more than the export I am having. So, any budget is a statement of what comes in and what goes out. Our earth and atmosphere system is in a state of a heat balance. Okay, because see, our earth is receiving energy continuously. Every second, every millisecond, the earth faces the sun. So, if earth was only receiving, then earth would become hot, hot, hotter and it, it would have exploded by now. There are mechanisms by which energy also goes out of the earth. So, we are studying how this mechanism operates. It is like, you know, I have, I have rainfall, but water is also being lost. Water falls, some water percolates down. Water falls, some water evaporates. Water falls, some water runs away. That is how the area continuously has recycling going on. So, our objective is to study how does this cycling happen? What comes in, what goes out, okay? How this happens is what I am studying. Now, this, this thing can be studied in two ways. One is, I can study in the concept of a cycle. We have got water cycle, we have rock cycle, we have nitrogen cycle, oxygen cycle, Cycling tells us something comes in, goes out, it changes, again goes here, again comes in. Cycle is a pictorial depiction of how things are managed. Ye pictorial hai. The same thing if I put in terms of a table, what comes in and what goes out, then it call, is called as a budget. So, any budget is a way of studying how exchange happens. So, can the budget, I am asking a question to all of you, can the budget, okay, be unbalanced, anybody? Can the budget be unbalanced? Yes, okay, the budget can be unbalanced, what we have for Indian budgets, our expenditure is more than our income and that is true for any economy, that is how we need investments, that is why we need some amount of FDIs, that is why we need some amount of uh, loans. So, budgets can always, okay, uh, uh, need not always be balanced. But if a system is able to maintain itself, then I will say it is balanced. Okay, budget is a statement, remember. Budget is what comes in 
एंड वॉट गोज आउट अगर दोनों सेम हो गया आई से बैलेंस अगर नहीं सेम है मे बी आई एम अर्निंग मोर देन आई एम स्पेंडिंग देन आई एम सेविंग समथिंग मे बी आई एम स्पेंडिंग मोर देन आई एम अर्निंग देन आई एम टेकिंग लोन्स ओके सो बजट नीड नॉट ऑलवेज बी बैलेंस्ड बट फॉर अर्थ एटमोस्फेयर सिस्टम इट इज बैलेंस्ड बिकॉज इफ इट वॉज नॉट बैलेंस्ड इफ अर्थ वुड रिसीव एनर्जी मोर देन लूजिंग अर्थ वुड हैव एक्सप्लोडेड एंड इफ अर्थ वॉज लूजिंग एनर्जी मोर देन रिसीविंग अर्थ वुड हैव अल्टीमेटली कम टू वॉट कॉल्ड एज योर जीरो डिग्री केल्विन जो माइनस टू सेवेंटी थ्री डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड में पहुंच जाता ओके सो अर्थ हैज सिस्टम ऑफ बैलेंसिंग दिस सो वी आर स्टडिंग हाउ डज दैट हैपन सो टू लाइन्स ऑन वॉट इज द कंसेप्ट ऑफ हीट बजेट बजट साइकिल इज द पिक्टोरियल डिपिक्शन थिंग्स आर सर्कुलेटिंग एंड इफ आई पुट ए स्टेटमेंट इट्स कॉल्ड एज बजट आई फाउंड दिस प्रॉब्लम फॉर मेनी स्टूडेंट्स ऑल दे दे नो वॉट द बजट इज मैं लिख के दिखाओ इस वर्ड में वॉट इज द कंसेप्ट ऑफ बजट यूल गेट ट्रैप दे डाउन ये वॉट इज बजट बजट इज बजट इज अ स्टेटमेंट ऑफ budget is a statement of what comes in and what goes out budget is a statement of what comes in and what goes out and if and if the exchange is balanced or not and if the exchange is balanced or not next point in nature in nature there are many such exchanges and transformations in nature there are many such exchanges and transformations the study of which tells us the study of which uh, tells us how the earth atmosphere the study of which tells us how the earth atmosphere maintains itself how the earth atmosphere maintains maintains itself next to depict such exchanges to depict such exchanges we can either use a pictorial tool we can either use a pictorial tool of cycles of cycles or we can use a statement or we can use a statement of numerical comparison or we can use a statement of numerical comparison called budget called budget next heat budget heat budget is therefore a way of appreciating the heat budget is therefore a way of appreciating how energy comes in and how energy is lost how energy comes in and how energy is lost from the earth atmosphere system how from how energy comes in and how energy is lost from the earth atmosphere system that maintains that maintains ambient temperatures that maintains ambient temperatures that makes life processes that maintains ambient temperature that makes life processes possible on earth ambient temperatures that makes life processes possible on earth okay ambient means what 
something which can okay support life and be comfortable the ambient light bolt right what the ambience what does it feel like so a temperature which can support life is called as the ambient temperature surrounding us so our earth is approximately uh, is about 12 to 15 degree centigrade average and this is just the right temperature we require for earth to have life the life processes are photosynthesis the life processes are respiration the life processes are germination the life processes are the water cycle how water circulates ye sab possibly hai because the temperature is being maintained within bracket mention earth receives earth receives solar energy continuously earth receives solar energy continuously but there is a mechanism by which earth also loses energy there is a mechanism by which the earth also loses energy without which without which earth would have got progressively hotter without which the earth would have got progressively hotter okay the heat budget the heat budget helps us understand the heat budget helps us understand this process of how the heat budget helps us understand this process of how the temperatures on the earth are maintained of how the temperatures on the earth are maintained take all of you fine here so one write up on what is the concept of heat budget hum kyu pad rahe hain why do i need it to understand how the earth atmosphere behaves so as to manage the energy it comes in it receives okay now all of you watch the board once so on one side i'm showing you what is the influx component on the other side i'm showing you what is the outflux influx means the incoming component outflux is the out going component energy comes in energy goes out the source of all energy is primarily the sun sun is 99.99% of all energy earth receives on the surface some energy earth receives also from volcanism if there is volcanic eruption happening the definitely kuch energy banega yahan par but that's very less compared to what our earth surface has in terms of temperature so whatever temperatures we have on the earth is primarily because of the sun and this sun okay is radiating energy and earth is receiving energy at a rate of approximately 1.9 uh, calories per uh, cm square per minute okay this is the amount of energy sir, receive, the earth receives at the outer atmosphere so this height is considered to approximately 800 kilometers above the surface of the earth the earth kitna receive kar raha hai this is the earth surface this is the atmosphere the earth atmosphere system receives approximately this much amount of energy we call this as the solar constant okay 1.9 calories per cm square per minute is called as the solar constant if i assume the solar constant is equal to 100% then how does the energy get distributed okay so what we find is what we find is that hundreds out of 
सम अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी इज रिफ्लेक्टेड बैक फ्रॉम द क्लाउड्स सम अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी इज रिफ्लेक्टेड फ्रॉम द डस्ट पार्टिकल्स सम अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी सरफेस को हिट करके अगेन गेट्स रिफ्लेक्टेड फ्रॉम द अर्थ सरफेस फ्रॉम द स्नो फ्रॉम द वॉटर फ्रॉम द लैंड फ्रॉम द फॉरेस्ट ओके सो रिफ्लेक्शन फ्रॉम क्लाउड्स रिफ्लेक्शन फ्रॉम डस्ट पार्टिकल्स रिफ्लेक्शन फ्रॉम द अर्थ सर्फेस द रिफ्लेक्शन कंपोनेंट इज कॉल्ड एज द एलबीडो एलबीडो ऑफ द अर्थ एटमोस्फेयर सिस्टम इन टोटैलिटी दिस इज अबाउट थर्टी फाइव परसेंट देख लो एक बार देन आई गिव यू द नोट डोंट वरी अंडरस्टैंड दिस फर्स्ट सो आई एम डिस्कसिंग हाउ डज द एनर्जी कम इन द सन इज द प्राइमरी सोर्स ऑफ एनर्जी the sun on an average is giving us and we are receiving 1.9 calories per cm square per minute amount of radiation this energy is received at the outer atmosphere approximately 800 km we consider as the outer atmosphere and this energy if assumed to be 100% okay what happens to this is one component called as albedo which is the reflection component albedo is the a reflection a reflection a scattering okay a dispersion is a mila dete hain hum log we call it albedo the albedo in totality from the clouds from the earth surface and from the dust particles halaki ye sab alag alag figure hoga clouds there are thousands of clouds all clouds will not have the same type of albedo so earth surface incredible variations kahi snow hai kahi water hai kahi river hai kahi forest hai kahi land hai urban areas rural areas so if i add up all of this together the reflection from the clouds from surface and dust particles it's about 35% of the insulation then the atmosphere because of ozone layer is able to absorb ye absorb kar leta hai okay a uh, 15% of the radiations 15% which is ultraviolet ozone the remaining that we have it directly comes and hits the earth's surface this what comes in this is a visible spectrum plus it is also the infrared if you remember visible spectrum is about 41 or uh, 42% infrared about 48 or 50% okay and 8 okay jo hai wo yahan phasta hai right if i add the reflection also together this is what we get so what our earth surface receives is part infrared and part visible spectrum so 35 15 gone how much do we have 50% all fine here this is how the insulation is okay coming in reflected or absorbed write down now so you all can make a diagram if you haven't made diagram make it neatly this time you have the sun the sun accounts for i said 99.99% of all a heat on the earth's surface this is equal to 1.9 uh, calories per cm square per minute and we have called this as the solar a uh, constant and let's assume this is equal to 100% of insulation theek hai make a diagram please all of you the solar constant we assume it is 100% of the insulation so write down in your notes write down now let's assume let's assume 
द एनर्जी रिसीव्ड एट द आउटर एटमोस्फेयर लेट्स अज्यूम द एनर्जी रिसीव्ड एट द आउटर एटमोस्फेयर इज अ हंड्रेड परसेंट इज हंड्रेड परसेंट विद इन ब्रैकेट it is the solar constant 1.9 calories per cm square per minute solar constant next 35% so what does the earth atmosphere receive 100% that's one number 2 35% number 2 is 35% is reflection and scattering losses reflection and scattering losses by the clouds dust particles and from the earth surface it is the reflection and scattering losses from the clouds from the dust particles from the earth's surface it is called as the albedo of the earth and atmosphere it's called as the albedo of the earth and atmosphere together the next point 15% 15% is absorbed in the atmosphere One five fifteen percent is absorbed in the atmosphere by the ozone layer. By the ozone layer, within bracket, this is the absorption of ultraviolet radiations. This is the absorption of the ultraviolet radiations. the next point 50% percent, 15 50 50% is received by the earth's surface 50% is received by the earth's surface which is largely in the visible spectrum which is largely in the visible spectrum and infrared in the visible spectrum and infrared okay it is this 50% it is this 50% that heats the earth's surface and the lower atmosphere it is this 50% that heats the earth's surface and and the lower atmosphere all good here so diagrammatically i have shown that ye 100 mein se okay a reflection component is 35% absorbed by the atmosphere is 15% absorbed by the earth surface is 50% this is land plus water plus vegetation and life forms ye sab mila kar they take 50% and this 50% is largely the visible spectrum and the infra red no problem here in the examination use more of such diagrams okay this is the albedo this component is the albedo of the atmosphere of the earth surface albedo means the reflection component no the dust particles will scatter scattering where you can say light kind of gets split up dust particles don't absorb they scatter the radiations 
एंड वन इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट ये जो एब्जॉर्बन है दिस इज अल्ट्रा वायलेट दिस इज अ शॉर्ट वेव रेडिएशन दिस इज शॉर्ट वेव रेडिएशन दिस विजिबल स्पेक्ट्रम एंड इंफ्रा रेड वे रेडिएशन वॉट दैट डाउट फिफ्टी परसेंट इज लैंड वॉटर वेजिटेशन एंड ऑल लाइफ फॉर्म्स जो कुछ सरफेस में मिल सकता है सब कुछ आइस वॉटर रॉक्स रिवर्स फॉरेस्ट ट्रीज ऑल ऑफ इट टूगेदर इज ऑन द सर्फेस ओके ओके सर यू सेड ओके इंफ्रा रेड इज फोर्टी वन फोर्टी टू परसेंट ओके और सॉरी विजिबल स्पेक्ट्रम is 42 41% then infra red is 48% ultra violet is 8% now you are saying this is 15% okay to pehle maine jhoot bola tha i said theek hai in fact no when the doubt starts with sir you said i know it's an attack okay so accordingly i also play my okay batting a bit more carefully i said okay but i have a reason to say so okay so when i say visible is 4142 ultra violet is 48 or 50 and uh, okay uh, sorry um, infrared and uh, ultra wide 8% hai this is this is what the earth receives at the outer atmosphere ye yahan pa kitna receive kar raha hai okay so this is equal to 100% of insulation then this comes inside what comes inside i am saying वन इज रिफ्लेक्टेड ये रिफ्लेक्शन में ये भी है और ये भी है इस रिफ्लेक्शन में यू हैव सम अमाउंट ऑफ विजिबल ऑल्सो इन द रिफ्लेक्शन सम अमाउंट ऑफ अल्ट्रा वाइड ऑल्सो ओके दिस इज वॉट द अर्थ रिसीव एट द आउट एटमोस्फेयर अब इस हंड्रेड का क्या होता है आउट ऑफ दिस हंड्रेड वॉट कम्स इन आउट ऑफ दिस what hits the surface is visible and infrared largely but understand in the reflection also we have some uh, so visible uh, some infrared and also some ultraviolet so after coming inside how does it get distributed and and while coming in at the outer surface this is the percentage is it okay all of you here okay let's move on so i've talked about the influx now all of you uh, yes yes parvas correct all the surfaces will have different type of albedos you can skip that detailing now what happens to the outflux i had used a term yesterday i think that uh, uh, this coming inside okay is visible and infrared and infrared can be absorbed by some amount of water vapor here yaad aa raha hai aapko so which radiation actually can pass through the atmosphere visible spectrum infrared can not all of it some amount of infrared can be absorbed by the water vapor here but which radiation can directly enter the atmosphere hit the surface it is the visible spectrum the visible spectrum is in 0.4 microns to 0.7 microns is range ko bolte hain atmospheric window so we say likh lo write this point down 
that in the insulation, is one sentence written, in the insulation, in the insulation, the visible spectrum is called as the atmospheric window of insulation. The visible spectrum, the visible spectrum is 0 0.4 microns to 0 0.7 microns. It's called as the atmospheric window of insulation. Window of insulation. Okay. It's also expressed as, its value is also expressed as, okay, quote unquote karo, the atmosphere, the atmosphere is, the atmosphere is, Transparent to the atmosphere is transparent to the visible spectrum. The atmosphere is transparent to the visible spectrum. Okay, that's one way of writing this term point, which means. The visible spectrum has no role in heating the atmosphere at all. It directly comes and hits the surface. Okay. Now about the outflux. So energy absorbed is uh, 50%. Is 50% ka kya hota hai? 8% is directly lost to outer space. Earth will absorb. Earth will radiate back. Earth will again lose it back. This is the long uh, wave uh, terrestrial radiation. The long wave terrestrial radiation. Okay. The amount lost is 8%. And this is in the spectrum of 8 to 10 microns. This range may the atmosphere cannot absorb. There's a, there's a statement that says atmosphere is selective in absorption. It can't absorb everything. Selective, it can't absorb in this layer. Selective, it can't absorb in this spectrum. This is the first component of the loss. Earth is absorbing. Earth will radiate back. The radiation back is long wave radiation in the wavelength of 8 to 10 microns. And this is called as the atmospheric uh, window of okay, out radiation. This is the atmospheric window of incoming radiation. This is the atmospheric window of outgoing radiation. The atmosphere cannot absorb okay, this range of energy. Okay, now, this is the atmosphere here. Ye 50 ka, some percentage is absorbed by the atmosphere because of uh, conduction and because of convection. No, there's molecules moving in contact. It will absorb something from the atmosphere. Some amount, some amount of energy is taken and lost here by latent heat of condensation. By latent heat of condensation. See what happens, this is water, water absorbs heat, water absorbs heat and water evaporates, when it evaporates, it takes the heat with itself, in the clouds, it becomes cold means what, it releases the heat and falls down as water droplet, so this proper of, this process of evaporation, condensation, Okay, will transfer heat from the water 
on the surface to the atmosphere and the clouds. So this change is called as the latent heat of condensation. Some amount of energy is lost from the land towards the cloud by conduction and convection. Some amount of energy is lost from the surface to the cloud's atmosphere by latent heat of condensation. Okay. Some amount of heat is lost because of continuous radiation exchange. This is warm. It heats the atmosphere. Atmosphere is warm. It again heats the land. Again becomes warm. It again heats the atmosphere. There is a continuous interaction going on. There is radiation, re-radiation, counter-radiation and this exchange the atmosphere is the net gainer. It's like, you know, there's a bank. I put money as savings. I take out money as ATM. I put money probably in terms of some investments. I take out money in terms of loan. I put some money in terms of some rental that bank charges. I take money in terms of interest payments. It goes on. In the net, maybe I have net more or the bank has net more. So, in the exchange of the surface and the atmosphere, the continuous exchange going on, okay, this is the radiation exchange of the surface with the atmosphere. This conduction convection is also called as the sensible heat. The sensible heat is approximately 10 units, is approximately 10 units. This latent heat of condensation is approximately 20 units. Okay. This exchange is approximately a 15 units. Okay. Achha, by the way, you can change karo for convenience. It's 8, but then there are variations in this. You make it as 5. This you write as 5% or 8%. I'll tell you why. Now see, I, I, I repeat this first. The direct loss outside is 5. Conduction, convection loss is 10. The latent heat loss is 20. And this exchange is 15. In reality, these numbers vary. Different scholars have given us different numbers. This is when you have 35, your book will mention 37.3%. This is 50, they'll say 47.8%. And it varies. There's one model given by Thevartha, which is the most popular one. What I have done is, I have used all convenient multiples so that you Okay. That's why I have many. These numbers are indigenous. Okay. I have deliberately used convenient numbers here because there are variations. So, in your book, it will say as 8 or 7, you keep it as 5 because nobody bothers about the exact numbers here. What I want to know is to understand the process of exchange or not. Okay. So, so uh, 15 radiation exchange. 10 is conduction convection and 20 is latent heat of okay, exchange. Now, this earth losing directly to outer space. Earth is low temperature or less temperature? Earth ka temperature kitna hai compared to the sun? It's very low. So, if low temperature hoga, the wavelength will be what? Long wavelengths and less energy. That's why this is long wave radiations. What came inside was what? Short wave radiations. What comes inside is not radio wave. What comes inside is not microwave. What comes inside is also not the higher range of infrared. What comes in is short wave and visible spectrum. What goes out here is long wave radiations. So, this exchange, what will happen? Long wave, short wave. This again is, now, 
long wave. It cannot be short wave. Okay, less temperature means higher wavelength. Okay, this is what long wave or short wave, convection and conduction. And what about latent heat of condensation, long wave or short wave? Neither. Because these two are not radiations. Take a common mistake. Hota hai. Radiation is one type of energy exchange. So when energy is exchanged, there are three mechanisms of energy exchange. Radiation, conduction, convection, and now you know latent heat of Okay, condensation also. Okay? In conduction convection, do the molecules play important role or not? Do the particles play important role or not? Yes. In latent the heat of condensation, do we have some role of molecules or not? Yes. It will evaporate and condense. In radiation, do we need molecules? No. Radiation will move without the need of a medium. So, do not use long wave, long wave here. Only these two are long wave radiations. It is like energy ame diya hai. One energy is light energy. Some energy is heat energy. Some energy is mechanical energy. Some energy is kinetic energy. Kul mila ke energy is 100. But not all of them are heat energy. Vaisi. Not all of them are radiations. Only these two are radiations. These two are not radiations. So don't use long wave, long wave here. How much did earth absorb? 50. The earth is losing 5 plus 20, 25. Okay, plus 10, 35, plus 15, 50. So earth's surface absorbed 50. Our surface has lost 50. All good here? Any doubts on this, anybody? Yes. Uh -huh. is, is ke wajah se? Haan, e, e, e net, net mein kya hai? The atmosphere gains energy. 10, not 20, 10. Conduction conversion is 10. Yeh 20, yes. Yeh 20, 20 atmosphere may add hoga, correct. Is mechanism a yes? Because evaporation beta air may hoga, na, thodi, uh, inside the water hoga. So you evaporate means the water vapor goes up atmosphere may. It becomes clouds, condenses. Heat is given out, thanda ho gaya, it will fall down. So is process may, the energy is given to the atmosphere. Yes. So, what heats the atmosphere? Atmosphere is heated by ultraviolet, some amount of heating by infrared, some amount of heating by this process. So, what heats the atmosphere? What heats okay, the land surface or water surface? This coming inside is heating the plus some heating also by this. But ultimately, net is it is losing. Okay, ye exchange. This is heating earth. Earth heats back the clouds. This heats again the surface, again heats back. In this exchange, the net is the surface is losing to the atmosphere. Yashish, uh, uh, what did you miss? Latent heat is a process where the energy gets exchanged because of change in the state of the body. Something was liquid, it has now become gas. There will be some latent heat exchange. Something is gas, it now becomes liquid. Again, some latent heat exchange. Something liquid becomes ice, it again becomes latent exchange. So, whenever there is a change in the state of the body, it's called as latent heat exchange. Are pura bataya kaha hai? Itna hi bataya hai. Abhi aap ko leke jate hai. Wait for that. Anybody else? Ashish, is it okay? Oh. Aja, suno esko. Say there is a liquid. 
this is liquid i am heating it i heat it h1 heat the temperature becomes 10 centigrade h2 heat it becomes a 50 degree centigrade h3 heat it now becomes 80 degree centigrade h4 heat it now becomes 90 centigrade h5 heat it becomes 100 centigrade i am adding heat that temperature is increasing if i add h6 heat this droplet will convert into a water vapor which is also at 100 degree centigrade okay so i'm giving heat 10 hua 50 hua 80 hua 90 hua 100 up till here it is water liquid i add h6 heat it has now become a gas but temperature continues to be 100 तो हीट गया कहां पर ये जो H5 H6 हीट है ये कहां गया आपका इट हैज बीन यूज्ड टू चेंज द स्टेट ऑफ द बॉडी दैट हीट इज हिडन इट इज नॉट शोन इन द टेंपरेचर दैट्स व्हाई इट्स कॉल्ड एज लेटेंट हीट लेटेंट मींस समथिंग इज हिडन सो द एक्स्ट्रा एनर्जी फ्रॉम H5 H6 आई एम गिविंग हीट but the temperature is not changing. Okay? That is the latent heat of that system. Now if we heat at 7, it will become vapor maybe at 150 centigrade. Add more heat, it will become warmer. So, here the change was where there is no change of temperature but change of state. That's called as latent heat. Yes, it's part of transforming the state. Correct. Okay. Uh, no, it's not like that, Gaurav. I, I, I'll come to that imbalance. Wait for that. Wait for that. Okay, let's move on. So, so the energy lost, the energy lost, okay, by the system of the earth is lost by direct radiations, lost by sensible heat, lost by it need a condensation and by exchange the total heat absorbed by the atmosphere now is okay 15 plus 15 30 plus 20 plus 10 is 60 now this 60 in totality will be directly lost to the outer space as long wave radiation loss of the atmosphere. This is the long wave radiation loss of the Earth's surface. This is the long wave radiation of the atmosphere. How much has the Earth atmosphere lost? 5 plus 60 65 plus Albedo 35. Kitna ho gaya? 100. So 100 had come in, 100 has gone out. All fine here? Go back to your notes. The outflux ka balance. The outflux balance. The outflux balance. Lay down. Number one. 5% is lost directly to the outer space. 5% is lost directly to the outer space from the Earth's surface. Is lost directly to the outer space from the Earth's surface. Number two. Uh, uh, this is in the spectral range of 8 to 10 microns. Spectral range of 8 to 10 microns. Next. Next. Okay. 
the atmosphere gains atmosphere gains 10% by sensible heat 10% by sensible heat from the earth surface from the earth surface and and it gains 20% by latent heat of condensation it gains 20% by latent heat of condensation next 15% is gained by the atmosphere 15% is gained by the atmosphere by the radiation exchange between by the radiation exchange between the earth's surface and the atmosphere by the earth's surface and the atmosphere within bracket this includes continuous this includes continuous radiation and re-radiation this includes continuous radiation and re-radiation between the earth's surface and the atmosphere radiation and re-radiation between the earth's surface and the atmosphere put hyphen this is long wave radiation exchange this is the long wave radiation exchange next point the total energy the total energy absorbed by the atmosphere the total energy absorbed by the atmosphere 1 2 3 4 points one below another 15% by short wave radiations of insulation 15% by short wave radiation of insulation 15% long wave radiation exchange 15% is long wave radiation exchange of the atmosphere with the earth surface 20% latent heat and 10% sensible heat total gain is 60 add up karo 15 plus 15 plus 20 plus 10 total is 60 next side down yes 10 sensible heat is 10 latent heat is 20 what is it sensible heat is conduction plus convection together the exchange that includes conduction and convection together is called as sensible heat next next okay um yeah the 60 units absorbed by the atmosphere the 60 units absorbed by the atmosphere is directly lost to is directly lost to the outer space as long wave radiations is directly lost to outer space by long wave radiations next the total loss from the earth atmosphere system the total loss from earth atmosphere system five percent number one is five percent directly from our surface direct radiation loss from the earth surface 
60% from atmosphere, 60% from atmosphere and 35% uh, albedo loss, 35% is albedo loss. Total is 100%. This is how, this is how the earth, this is how the earth maintains its, its radiation balance. This is how the earth maintains its radiation or insulation radiation balance. Whatever comes in also goes out. This is how the earth maintains its radiation balance. Now, there are four important points here. Now, watch. All of you watch here. If whatever comes in is lost directly, okay. Say if I got 100 rupees and I have given back 100 rupees, net effect is I will have nothing, right? Nothing means the earth ka jo temperature hoga minus 273 degree Kelvin. Okay, if what comes in and goes out, then earth will have no temperature at all. Then how does earth maintain the 15 degree centigrade temperature? Agar jo aar wapas ja hai, how does earth maintain that? One. Number two, if whatever comes in and what and all goes out there itself, then why is the equator more warmer than the poles? The conclusion here is three things here. Okay. So, if energy comes in here, say I'm mean, random number, energy is 100 here, what goes out is not 100, what goes out probably is only, okay, say 20. The remaining 80 gets transferred and is lost from here. Okay, what comes in here probably is only 10. Okay, and this area is losing 80. Net loss kitna hai? 70. Net gain kitna hai par? Okay, it is 80. Have you got the point here? So, what comes in goes out, but what comes in goes out is not same for every latitude. The low latitudes receive more energy and they release less. Okay. Bulk of it is transferred towards the high latitudes. Some goes out here, some probably goes out here, some goes out here. Ye dono mila ke. 100 comes in here totality mein. Okay. And what goes out also will be 100 totality mein. But the balance is not maintained at every latitude. That is why the low latitudes have surplus energy and the high latitudes have deficit. That's one. Second is what comes in is not lost instantaneously. Okay. What comes in warms the water. Water helps plants to grow. The plants are eaten by okay, some animals. The animals die. The life forms perform metabolism. It's like, you know, I earn 100, I don't give back immediately. I take 100, I put in my savings. Right? Some amount of money, I give it to my children. Okay. They spend some money, not I am spending everything. Some money I invest. That 20 rupees now becomes 30 rupees. Then I give back some as a part of interest and taxes. Otherwise, I will have nothing in my hand. So, how is it a person has income of, of 50,000 rupees and he can buy a bike of 2 lakh rupees because he's saving? I, I earn 50, saving one month, second month, third month, fourth month. One year ke baat mein, I have enough savings. I give it back as buying a back bike. So, the balance that the earth has is a very complex system. The balance is not achieved instantaneously. So what happens is, say, 
the energy comes in is energy called A. Okay, at time T1. Then at time T2, energy called Eb comes in. At time T3, energy called Ec comes in. At time T1, what goes out is, okay, energy called as A. At time T2, what goes out is energy called as B. Okay. What goes back here is energy called as C. Now, Ea comes in, but Ea is not lost at T1. Ea is partly lost at T2. So, this Xb has the Ea component. This Xc has the Eb component. I earn 10 rupees. I am not spending the 10 rupees. I am spending from a saving of last month. Have you got the point here? So, energy comes in, the Ea is absorbed here and it is doing some work. It must have come at time T0. Okay. What goes back at T2 is part of T1 and part of T0. So, energy is not lost instantaneously. Energy comes in, energy is absorbed, energy does work. And ultimately, energy will go out. That is how the earth can maintain some amount of its ambient temperature. Agar atmosphere nahi hota, an earth would have been a sparkling, shiny, okay, say surface like ice. Then whatever comes in is lost immediately. That's not how the earth operates. Okay, right now, give a subheading. Okay. The balance mechanism, the balance mechanism of how earth maintains, the balance mechanism of how earth maintains its energy, how earth maintains its energy, energy levels. Number one, number one, while the earth atmosphere system, while the earth Yes, Ganesh, you are right. While the earth energy system, sorry, earth atmosphere system is in a state of balance, is in a state of balance as a whole. Earth energy system is in a state of balance as a whole. The balance is not maintained at every latitude. The balance is not maintained at every latitude. You see my next paragraph. The low latitudes and tropics, the low latitudes and tropics have net surplus, have net surplus. They receive energy and they transport, they receive energy and they transport it to high latitudes. And they transport it to high latitudes. The high latitudes are, the high latitudes are, the latitudes of net deficit are latitudes of net deficit. They receive less energy. They receive less energy. But they lose more energy. They receive less energy, but they lose more energy. Okay. At around 40 degrees north and south, next point, at around 40 degrees north and south, the balance is perfect and the net gain or loss is zero. The balance is perfect, the net, net gain or loss 
is 0. This is like this. Say this is North Pole, this is South Pole, the equator hai. Okay. Say this is the amount of energy we receive. And this is the amount of energy that is lost. This is the lost energy and uh, uh, this is the received energy and this is the equator. At the equator, you are receiving more, you are losing less. At the high latitudes, you are losing more, you are receiving less. So, this part, you are losing more, receiving less. Okay. In this part, you are receiving more and losing less. So, this jo latitude, hai, this is 40 degree south, 40 degree north, these are latitudes of energy surplus. This is energy deficit. This also is energy deficit. And this number approximated hai, assuming there is no land water difference. Otherwise, the values can change. You remember this much is good enough for us. Okay. The high latitudes are locations of more loss than gain. The low latitudes, this is 0 degree equator. So, what is happening actually is, okay, energy from here comes here and is lost here. Energy from here comes here and is lost here. Of course, some energy is also gone here, but bulk of the energy comes here and also goes here. Okay. Write down next. It is this process of, it is this process of interlatitudinal energy exchange. It is this process of interlatitudinal energy exchange that is responsible for, it is this process of interlatitudinal energy exchange that is responsible for the atmospheric and the ocean dynamism, responsible for the atmospheric and ocean dynamism of winds, of winds, cyclones, of winds, cyclones, ocean currents and ocean circulations of winds, of cyclones, of ocean currents and ocean circulations. This is the difference hai, that drives the weather phenomena of the atmosphere. Yes, circulations, ocean currents and ocean circulations. Jo bhi wind chal raha hai, is because of these variations. All fine here? So that is one, one insight. The next insight is, whatever number one, two, whatever you have. The next insight is, next is, okay. The energy balance, the energy balance is also not instantaneous. The energy balance is also not instantaneous. That is, that is, the energy absorbed is not immediately lost. The energy absorbed or energy received is not immediately lost. The energy is absorbed for, the energy is absorbed for life processes, Hydrological cycles, life processes, hydrological cycles, climatic phenomena, 
before the energy is actually lost. Before the energy is actually lost. Okay, so this T1 may in the time uh, T1, I receive energy. Okay, it comes in, it does work. Maybe it's lost during time T10. Okay. अगर साथ साथ यही लॉस कर देगा देन तो नथिंग इज पॉसिबल सो एनर्जी इज नॉट लॉस्ट इंस्टेंटेनियसली एंड एनर्जी इज नॉट लॉस्ट एट द सेम लोकेशन आइदर यहां रिसीव किया यही नहीं जा रहा है एंड नॉट इंस्टेंटेनियसली लास्ट पॉइंट द क्लाइमेट चेंज दैट वी विटनेस द क्लाइमेट चेंज that we witness is the consequence of the heat budget getting distorted the climate change that we witness is because of is because of the heat budget getting distorted okay. events such as ozone depletion events such as ozone depletion comma change of the surface nature change of the surface nature comma change in the greenhouse gases composition of lower atmosphere changes in the greenhouse gases composition of the lower atmosphere all have resulted in all have resulted in more retention of heat in the earth and atmosphere have resulted in more retention of heat in the earth and atmosphere causing global warming causing global warming what we're saying is say say ultraviolet should have been 15 percent but aapne ozone hata diya so the 15 becomes less our surface receives now maybe 55 the surface you have changed the surface had ice आइस वुड रिफ्लेक्ट बैक समथिंग आपने आइस मेल्ट कर दिया द रिफ्लेक्शन इज नॉट थर्टी फाइव इट इज प्रोबेबली थर्टी ओके सो द अर्थ सर्फेस इज रिसीविंग मोर एनर्जी एंड होल्डिंग बैक मोर ऑल्सो दिस द लेट इन हीट ऑफ कंडेंसेशन और सेंसिबल हीट यू गॉट मोर ग्रीन हाउस गैसेज हेयर मोर डस्ट पार्टिकल्स हेयर यू गॉट मोर ओके मीथेन हेयर मोनोक्साइड हेयर the absorption is no longer okay 15 plus 20 plus okay 10 it's probably now 20 25 and maybe 15 so when you change atmospheric composition you end up absorbing more from the surface when you change this you end up absorbing more from the sunlight so climate change is essentially the disruption of these elements of the earth and the atmosphere all good here, all of you? Fine then, that's for today. We continue tomorrow. Uh, at uh, uh, 2.30, you have your case study. So, the case studies happens in the first floor. So, you can take a short break. And uh, it's your choice, but I prefer that you attend the sessions, all of you. <laughs>